Hello, my name is Gary Tibbetts. I'm the owner of Quantum Harvest LLC. We manufacture a comprehensive line of EMP protected portable solar power systems ranging from very small to very large and also a line of Faraday boxes. But that's not what we're going to talk about here today. This project came about as a prototyping project I've been working on where I needed some PCBs or printed circuit boards that weren't available. So, long story short, I decided to make my own. After many trials and tribulations and money wasted and time wasted, I'd come upon this process of making them that's fast, it's relatively cheap, uses commonly available materials, and can make as many as you want about as fast as you want. So let's get started. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the materials you'll need, um, very inexpensive materials, chemicals. First thing you need, just ordinary acetone. I can get that right at Walmart. Second, this is for the etching part. Just ordinary hydrogen peroxide, the same stuff you get right at Walmart. Nothing special. And uric acid. It's cheap, it's plentiful. Don't breathe it, don't drink it, but other than that, you'll be fine. Now, the, for the transfer, this is a toner transfer process. I started out using this material here. It's a transparency film. Um, it works. It works very well. The only trouble being it has to be quite hot. What recently I've started using is I get this, this paper on eBay. It's a toner transfer paper. It's cheap. This, I'm paying about 12 cents a sheet for this stuff. Get it right on eBay, uh, 100 sheets at a time. You'll need some ordinary painters to, mass painter's tape. Obviously, you'll need the circuit board, the PCBs themselves. I, I use a 4 by 6 inch board, single sided board. You'll need a flat file. You'll need some ultra fine steel wool. And probably very important here, you need latex gloves. Don't use anything else because the acetone will eat it up. Um, acetone itself isn't particularly harmful for your skin, but it does dry out your skin and makes it itch. So it's a lot easier to, if you don't have to be exposed to that stuff, just wear the Okay, I'm going to get started here. Put my special gloves on, that sound that everyone hates at the doctor's office. First thing you're going to do with a PCB board, sometimes they're a little rough around the edges where they've been cut. So you're just going to take the flat file and just real quickly go around the edges. You don't want, you don't, if you have a raised ridge there, it's going to make it harder for the laminator to transfer the pattern. That's it, it's nice and feel it nice and smooth there to your fingers. You're going to take a piece of ultra-fine steel wool. I'm just going to remove this patina, this oxidation off the thing. Don't have to get too carried away. It takes but a moment here. Just What you want is a nice, clean, burnished surface. Wear the gloves here to keep the fingerprints off on it. Now, there, there is an oil in, in the steel wool that it's preserved with, so we're going to have to remove that before we do a process. So you see, not a not a huge amount of work. I've got a piece of it. I don't know if the camera shows it well or not, but it's nice and clean and burnished. Yeah. So this is a now the acetone. It'll take the. It doesn't hurt your skin too much. Make it itchy a little bit, but to take the finish off of whatever you're working in. So what I do is I to preserve my marriage. I keep all the acetone right in this. Uh, this is the ordinary cat litter pan. Perfect. Well, I have three. These containers are all full of acetone. They're just a, the dirty stuff here for taking the toner off. And then I have a cleaner. And then I have the clean, the very clean stuff here. So I'm going to take this board. I'm going to put it right in the acetone. I'm just going to. I just got a paper towel in. I'm just going to lightly wipe it to make sure that all the grease and the oil and whatever is taken off. Any little bits of dirt, any any hair, anything that's like that that's on it. Will interfere with a toner sticking to it, so we'll set this aside for right now. We will be using that again later. Wave the thing in the air a little bit, the acetone dries quite quickly. I find a little, little I have just a little ordinary little box to set the thing up on, it makes it easy to get it up out of the dirt and whatnot. Now we apply the pattern. I've taken the liberty of, to save time. I've already printed these out. 
Um, a note on the printing, you absolutely have to have a laser printer. You do not use an inkjet printer, it won't work. What you need is a toner. This is the material, the, the yellow paper. It's got the toner. There's, there's actually three circuit boards on here to fit one board. You're going to print on the shiny side. So make, sure that, make sure it's clean. You're going to lay it right on your board here, like so. Take a small piece of painter's tape. I'm going to line it up. I make the pattern just a little bit smaller than the board. I don't know if the computer shows it or not, but it doesn't have to be exact, but there's no sense wasting anything. I'm going to apply that right there. This is the heart of the operation right here. This is a modified Apache AL13P laminator. It's an all-metal unit. Surprisingly inexpensive. They're available on Amazon for about 90 bucks. last time I checked. If you notice this unit here, if you compare it to a stock unit, it has three additional controls on the front. This is a modification done to the unit that allows it to make PCBs in one pass. If We'll zoom in a little bit here on the controls themselves. You can see that there's a temperature override on the left. That's used rarely. There are times when you need a little extra heat. This gives you about 30 degrees extra heat above what the machine itself will put out. The mode button toggles the mode. You can go back to regular laminator mode or you can make PCB mode just by pressing the button. And also by pressing and holding the button puts it in a cool down mode which allows the rollers to keep turning while it cools down so you don't get flat spots on the rollers. The rightmost control obviously is feed speed. It's fairly self-explanatory. And I'll show you how it's used. Okay. Get the piece. The Printed circuit board is the board itself has been prepared, as we've shown earlier. It's been polished and buffed and cleaned. You get the pattern printed out on the yellow paper, fixed to the board. Now you're just going to take your take your thumb here and kind of hold it just a little bit taut, not too hard. You're just going to going to toggle this unit into PCB mode. I don't know if you can hear. It. I don't know if the camera will pick up the sound or not, but you can hear the relay is clicking. Now. And you can see how it works. You just hold it, you feed it in gently. Don't try to cram it in. And that's it. This will go back and forth. It gains about an eighth of an inch each time. This is at its slowest setting, which is I found perfect, so I just leave it alone. Notice there's a pan of water here. This thing does get hot, you might burn your fingers, but mostly the water is to drop the board in when it's done. So, we'll watch it here for a few minutes and I'll cut to the end. You can see it's fully automatic. Now, once it's doing this, you can go, you can be preparing another board or you can be doing something else or whatever. It takes about two to three minutes for this to run through for this size board. So, We'll let this run a minute and then we'll come back to it. Okay, I chopped about 30 seconds out of it. It's just coming out the back here now. It'll be about another 30 seconds, it'll be done. Obviously, you could you could run more than one board here at a time. Some people you can I'd run as many as three here at once. Just start them staggered, so they don't all come out at once. Drop it in the water. Put it back to regular laminated mode. No sense in chattering the relays longer than it has to. We're going to swish it around here in the water until it's thoroughly cool. It's not terribly hot coming out of the thing, but it's warm. So usually what I do here is I just swish it in the water here for 
probably can't see here. Swish it in the water here for a few minutes. Two seconds actually. The paper starts to get wrinkly and come off. Sometimes it's hard to, with the gloves on, it's hard to find a corner here to get started on. There you go. So you can, you can observe your pattern as you as you lift the paper off. Hopefully I'm getting it at a good angle here. You can kind of watch your yellow paper as you're peeling it off for black spots. If you see black spots then you've got broken traces and means just a means a do over. This one came out fine. Usually if if you if it isn't if you don't get a good adhesion, usually you can just uh, up the heat a little bit. So there's the board right there. Looks good. I don't see any broken traces. It's ready for etching. That's the next step. Okay, now we're ready for the actual etching part. Before we get started that, a few words about the etching tank itself. Now, you don't actually need one of these. You can put the etching in a small pan like this with a cover and you can shake it and it takes forever. Um, this, about, this unit here is about 60 bucks. The nicest thing about it is it's got an immersion heater in it. This solution right now is obviously, it's not boiling, this is air being pumped into it, but it's about 130 degrees. Now the etching itself, as I mentioned earlier, is made of hydrogen peroxide and muriatic acid. This container right here, this level right here above the water level, has got actually two quarts. So there's three, there's three pints of hydrogen peroxide and one pint of muriatic acid. Now remember, with acid you always add acid to water, so I pour the three pints of peroxide in first, and then I add the acid into the peroxide. Now when it starts out, the solution is clear, and it etches very, very, very fast. As a matter of fact, you won't even want it heated when the first time you use it. But after you've used it, this solution here is etched probably about 30 boards. You get a solution of what they call cupric chloride in here, and the, the copper chloride is what actually does the etching from that point. It's more controllable. So without further ado, this is the, this is the board. You can see the traces from the toner earlier. I've drilled a small hole in the board. It affects a plastic piece of plastic wire through here. And at this point, we're just going to simply drop it in the tank. Now, it doesn't doesn't take too long to do this. The average time is maybe five or six minutes. So while while that's starting to etch, we'll make a note of a tool that I've got here. You will you will drop things in this etching at some point. You can't get your hand down in there, so having a cheap one of these is handy. This has been used a few times. You can see it's a little rusty, but very handy for fishing stuff out that you've lost in there. So while this is etching, I like to I like to put a light behind of it, and you can actually see you'll see some holes start appearing as the copper gets eaten away. So. I'm going to pause the camera here. We'll give it, maybe give it about a minute until it really starts etching, and then we'll come back and look at it again. Okay, as you can see, about, been about a minute and a half has gone by. You can see the copper has been removed from the edges here, and it's very nearly finished. So it's probably going to take another couple of minutes or so. While we're waiting for this to finish up, a word about this etchant. It's not a particularly strong acid because of all the hydrogen peroxide you've diluted it with. However, it, it is murder on stainless steel. It will take the finish off on anything stainless steel. So bear that in mind when you have it near your wife's sink. It's almost finished, and when, we, when it's finished etching, we'll uh, just pull it out and drop it in this just plain tap water to halt the etching process. So if you leave it in there long enough, it will, it will undercut and take everything off the board. I'm not sure how long it would take. I've never left one in there that long. You'll notice the solution is darker than it was. The reason for that is as copper is being picked up and gone into solution. This particular chemical can be regenerated by either just letting the air run, by basically by adding oxygen to the mixture. Now you can either do that by letting the air run, or you can just add a little bit of peroxide. Either one works fine. Um, what you want is it'll, be, it'll brighten right up again, turn bright green again like it was when we started. So 
so it's pretty much endlessly renewable, reusable, I should say. Just got a little, little bit of copper there in the middle that we're trying to take off, and it'll be done. You can, you can actually see that spot getting smaller and smaller right in real time. I've done this hundreds of times and I never fail to be fascinated by it. When that last bit of copper is done, it's not critical. I mean, you, you, you probably got a few minutes before it does any harm. I like to swish it in there a couple times. And remove it and drop it right into the water. Now, as you can see, the only thing that's left are just the toner traces that we left on there earlier. So now all we have to do is wipe that toner off and we're good to go. So here we're ready to remove the toner. It's very simple. I'm just going to take the board here. I'm going to lay it right in this pan of ordinary acetone. Take this paper towel. And I'm not sure how well the camera shows it here. As you can see, just very lightly wipe it. You don't suddenly, there's no scrubbing involved. Take it from that. And switch it to some slightly cleaner stuff here. Takes it about, about 30 seconds here to air dry. Here a little bit. At this point is perfectly dry. Don't need the gloves anymore. We're done with the acetone. And we have a Let me shut this light off here. I have a perfect actually there's four boards here. Absolutely perfect. They all, all they have left to be doing do now is be cut apart, drilled, and populated. And that's it. Thank you for watching.